is not the stream. Good afternoon and welcome to this, the fourth edition of Referendum TV. We're going to be running every day this week except tomorrow, Tuesday. We're a topical live show looking at all the themes of our independence referendum. I'd like to introduce myself. I'm, my name is Michelle Thompson. I'm a businesswoman and today also a broadcaster. We also have Stephen Payton, brainchild and star of NDF, NDREF Weekly Review, mm -hmm. and Sarah Beattie Smith, who's going to be chatting to us about themes we're, and trends we're setting on Twitter. We've got an excellent panel of guests. Uh, we're going to be joined by Elaine C. Smith. Yeah. Hopefully, uh, David Hayman. <laughs> Keir McAllister and Paul Sneddon, all of whom are currently appearing on shows with a referendum theme in the Edinburgh Festival of Fringe. As we've come to say in this show, we're doing this very low budget, staffed by volunteers. Don't bemoan the media, be the media. So, leads us on. So, Sarah, what trends are we setting on Twitter? What have we got coming through from yesterday and today? Well, it's still going great guns on the, in the world of Twitter and Facebook. Um, we've, we're on Facebook as well at, at Referendum TV. You can find us there. Um, on Twitter, we've been looking at lots of the articles that are doing the rounds at yeah. the moment. Um, Brian Cox, you may have seen, was on um, the Huffington Post talking about hope and fear and saying that really Scots need to conquer their fears. So, had some good discussions around that. Um, and folks saying... Um, that uh, mm. it's being about big enough, being rich enough and intelligent enough to remove uh, Westminster shackles, says Iron Brew and Whiskey. That's their hashtag there. And um, we've also been having some really interesting chat about Joanne Lament, who you may have seen yesterday um, talking about, uh, well, not talking about what extra powers might be coming to Scotland. She was apparently unable to answer the question um, ah, about extra powers. Tell us more, tell us more. <laughs> so uh, at Roddy1314, and we're saying all sound bites and no real answer. Accountability, accountability is not an extra power, Jola. Um, so a bit of criticism there for Joanne Lament yeah. on the Twitters. Um, and finally, our very own Leslie Riddick, one of our co-hosts, um, was talking yesterday about um, the distractions, perhaps, of the currency debate being something that's maybe dominating too much. Um, and actually, the real debate is much more kind of grassroots. Um, mm. So um, sh there was a Bill Phil Farm, at Bill Phil, Bar Phil Farm, sorry, I was saying the possibility of polarity of fear and self-interest and collective vision rooted in, in identity. Um, as the, the kind of feel of what, what they're getting from the debate out there beyond what we're just talking about with the currency. So keep tweeting through the show. Yeah. It's hashtag ref TV and we'll pick okay. up at the end of the show about what you're saying. Okay, thank you, Sarah. So, okay. um, right, anyway, Stephen, let's have a chat about what's in the papers today. I think you'd picked up on that uh, yeah, Riddick article, hadn't you? Yeah, I had a wee look at that as well and it's really interesting. What we're seeing is a lot of people talking about the... Uh, the real debate isn't taking place um, through politicians, it's taking yeah. place online, it's people having yeah. chats about what's important to them and why they think yeah. independence is uh, well, the way to go or not to go, depending. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and so I think that article's pointing out that what the politicians are saying, and in some respects the endless chitter-chatter about which currency and so mm -hmm. on, but for many other people the themes are entirely different, aren't they? Yeah, and that's definitely what we see online. The, the debate online is focused on so many more things, and Leslie's yeah. article... She did specifically say that um, a lot of the people are talking about what's really important to them. David McCrone said that uh, it's almost the focus on education, law and religion is uh, really? you know, creating basically a very Scottish way of doing things. And I think a yeah. lot of the debate focuses around that. And is, uh, I think a lot of people see the currency question as almost a distraction from what's the more important points, yeah. which is uh, why we're not going to be talking about currency today. <laughs> we did that yesterday for, if anyone managed to uh, listen into that, we had George Caravan on who gave a, an excellent and detailed answer to that. I thought that was uh, super. Okay, so what else have we got? Um, also looking a little bit at the uh, Guardian, uh, reporting that the government's been criticised for censoring a report into the impact of shale gas drilling and yeah. the effect on house prices. And obviously you're involved in property, so what's yeah. your opinion on that? 
Yeah, I mean, obviously, we're all waiting to see how things uh, pan out. I mean, to me, uh, the whole property thing is all driven, or property value is driven by perception. Mm. And obviously, there's a considerable level of fear around uh, the, the sort of fracking driven from what people see in the States. You turn on your tap and flames come out and so mm. on. But if the perception is there, then it could really have a have an impact in, until it steadies out. So I guess it remains to, remains to be seen. But I certainly would believe that would be a, a real fear for mm -hmm. people. Okay, is that us done That's in, the, now, in the yeah. papers? Right, okay. So, carrying on then, that was great. Thanks, uh, Stephen. Now, I'd like a lot of noise for this. We're going to have now joined by Elaine C. Smith, who's in two shows at the moment. One, Alan Bissett's Pure the Dead and the Brilliant, and her own one-woman show that's been running for some time, still standing just. I'd like to welcome Elaine C. Smith. <laughs> So, how are you doing? You must be exhausted, are you? Knackered, yeah. Um, <laughs> but I said I could do it when I wrote in, as they say. Um, yeah. But it, that, it was all a bit of a, a strange way of uh, happening, actually, because I'd already agreed. I'd met, I was doing a play that, at the Tron in Glasgow that David Gregg had directed, and Alan Bissett sent me The Pure, yeah. The Dead, and The Brilliant. And I just, my husband actually read about it, and he said, I don't know whether it's something you want to do. And I went, oh, no, I, I want to do this. Yeah. And it's weird because I've been offered two or three different jobs down in London, really nice jobs as well. And I just thought, I want to be in Edinburgh. Yeah. I want to be here at this time in my country's history. Yeah. And actually, the world will be here. Why would I want to go to London? And I want to be doing a play that is about the referendum. And I yeah. found it just uh, incredibly clever, funny, clever, mm -hmm. uh, articulating the aspects we've been talking about, fear... Mm -hmm. Um, and a hope, the difference between that and the fact that it was it was the four mythological creatures who have haunted Scotland for thousands of years, who meet on Hugmanay, determined to get a no vote, yes. is, is just a lovely idea. And it was coming on it from a different way. It was Agit Crotman. And then uh, Tommy, who's a big Yes uh, supporter who runs the Assembly Rooms, uh, he said to me, will you come and do your stand-up for a few nights? And I stupidly said yes. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I did a run of it, which is, yeah. and it, they've been sold out. It's been fantastic, both shows. Yeah. And, but uh, in a way, I'm more proud of The Pure, The Dead and The Brilliant because, because of the way it has reached out and the reaction from the audience as well. Somebody said to me yesterday, you got re really emotional. Well, I wasn't emotional about me. I was emotional at the reaction of the audience. Because uh, even even people who are voting no, they quieten down a wee bit, you know, and sort of go, oh, actually, that's very interesting. Mm -hmm. A friend said the other day that she was sitting in amongst a, a group of Edinburgh um, definite no voters, maybe Morningside ladies, and she said the chat at the beginning was awful. She almost moved her seat there. She was like, I mean, it's ridiculous. What are they thinking? <laughs> I mean, all these yes people, they're idiots. Uh, a bit of that. And yeah. uh, I mean, what about our pensions? And what about this? And there's a line about Alex Salmon, and yeah. it was just this section who cheered um, when it was an insult yeah. to him, and the rest of the audience, and and she said it was really interesting that by the end, they were less vociferous. Yeah. They were suddenly aware that there were other people who thought differently. Yeah. And that it wasn't, uh, they couldn't attack the play in the way that they thought they would be able to or whatever. So, and that for me is a real victory yeah. of the play more than anything. And ever. part of it for me, this sort of <clears> theme, <throat> this idea that we almost attack ourselves as Scots came through uh, oh, so clearly so. and holding up a, a mirror uh, to that for people to be enabled to see that I thought was, was a great strength of the Oh Well, the I, had, I had friends in yesterday who are still sort of don't know yeah. Swithering, <coughs> excuse me, and they were they were very taken by those lines that Alan's got in that he articulates, you know, Scotland is a stunted, terrified nation, mm. I weary of the tentacles of the future. And, and uh, you know, also that he doesn't join in the end, because I'm wasting it if you're coming to see it, but <laughs> he does it, uh, the, the demon uh, articulates yeah. that, you know, Scotland is a habit of when faced with an open yeah. goal, blittering it over the bar. <laughs> and, and to ha be able to mm. laugh at that, even yeah. as a yes voter. Because for me, yes is about growing up. It mm. is about facing. I love the fact that he also articulates 
Scotland's involvement with the, starting up the KKK in Tennessee, mm -hmm. starting up, uh, you know, what it did in India. The Scots mm -hmm. were there too. We were. And yeah. in South Africa, and loading up uh, slave ships full of Negroes going out of uh, of Glasgow, you know, to pretend that we, we don't have ghosts. Yeah. Um, and I love the fact that he articulates that because that for me is about being grown up. And as you know, I was uh, uh, there yesterday and I must admit, I did have some tears at the end and it was it was a kind of rush of emotion because yeah. I was surrounded by all these people and, and it feels so real now. Is, is that a typical reaction? Is that what you're experiencing every day or was yesterday exceptional? Because no, obviously you welled up as well. I've welled up quite a few days yeah. actually by uh, because yes, supporters come in think it's going to be, yeah, and, yeah. and then they realise, oh, it's, it's, it's actually more than that. Mm -hmm. It's cleverer than that. It's speaking to yes supporters as well. Uh, and, and challenging them a wee bit too, yeah. which I think is very good. So it's it's the movement by the end of the day, you know, when or the end of the piece, uh, that they've come on the journey. But no, that, that reaction has been there yeah. every single day, which has been... A really amazing and wonderful to be mm -hmm. a, a part of, really. Yeah, to, um, just, just to, as you say, to be part of everything that is going on in that room and that level yeah. of emotion. And I also love the fact that he's allowed the little imp, the bogle, the questioning, the who is like the wee Ned almost yeah. in the middle of it. <laughs> Paul Corrigan. Paul yeah. Corrigan, who is fabulous. That sort of buttons type yeah. of character. He's the poet in the end. And for yeah. me... Independence will unleash yeah. that that level of involvement, and it is. I've, I've often felt I was a teacher in another life that it was areas like Ox Gangs and Easter House or Wester Hills. The amount of potential that is there that is yeah. so underused in Scotland, and I love the fact that he allowed that wee guy who was about I just want to have a party to be the poet at the end, to mm. articulate because that's what this movement is about. The movement is about those people knocking doors on pushing wet nights, you know, mm -hmm. um, getting turned away yeah. and getting into debates, but, but being welcomed by others. And, and it kind of picks up on a, a theme that, that Colin Fox does when he's out speaking, which mm. I really like. It's about people taking back control yeah. of shaping their own future. And he's out and he's talking to mainly working class audiences and he says to them, and you'll be able to say to your kids, I did this. Yeah. And it gives you some, And I think there's something sweetly ironic for me if actually it's a working class people that are the they're the difference that makes a yeah, difference time to step up. For, you know for the yeah. we've got we've kind of lost that in the uk is it's a hoi well, polloi that's so being, the, the, you know not ordinary people don't feel involved it's uh, eating educated posh boys yeah. that run everything and for me a no vote is about seeing see you a couple of thousand guys down yeah. in london mainly guys the elite that run everything, that are intertwined from the judiciary to the House of yeah. Lords to the government, all of those, all of those who've come through Oxford, Oxford and Cambridge, th you're basically saying yeah. you run everything yeah. because uh -huh. we don't really want And And uh, that would be the most depressing thing for me about a no vote, that we're saying you are better at running things, even yeah. though they're not. Yeah. Yeah. We're handing all that power back. And it's uh, fantastic that... Um, the fringe is allowing us to have these kind of conversations and, oh, and yeah. discuss these things. And um, what what do you think about almost the different ways that the main Edinburgh Festival and the Fringe have approached this? With um, Jonathan Mills, director of the Edinburgh Festival, uh, banning all referendum based well, shows. Well, I don't. I don't actually think that was true. No. No, I don't think I. I have a wee feeling there was a that was a bit of a call to arms because I don't. I, I've only I've only met Jonathan a couple yeah. of times and I think he's great, but I think he was leaving. And it, it, someone else coming in, he couldn't tell them what to do by actually saying, no, we're not going to have any referendum based shows. He didn't ban them. Mm. He just said, we're not, as the official of us, going to do it. It, it galvanised the rest of us to go, right, OK, here we go. <laughs> and and it galvanised someone like Tommy Shepherd to say, right, assembly rooms is a, ref a referendum zone. You want to bring anything about it, come to us. So, uh, in retrospect, maybe it isn't as bad a thing as... Mm -hmm. And uh, I think the stushy that it caused, had he not said that and just programmed, 
I don't think there would have been an online sort of yeah, was a uh, change, campaign or petition. a change or yeah. any of that. So so maybe he was cleverer than we think. Oh well, <laughs> <laughs> that's that's good to know. And so tell me about your other sh your other show. Then that's been running. It started off in our growth, is that right? Yeah, and then you finished in October. Well, I've been doing. I, I had an idea about a year ago. I hadn't done my stand up in about twelve years. I'd done it like, charity things yeah. and corporate things and all that, but um, I just thought. Uh, Somebody, Ruth Wishart, my great pal, said to me, she saw me at a thing, he said, you need to get out there and make folk laugh, get back out there. And, and I sort of put things together, but I had this idea, because I do have a big criticism of the media here in, in Scotland, that we do not reflect ourselves back. Yeah. We don't see ourselves. It's through the prism of London and a sort of watered-down BBC Scotland STV vision of what Scotland is. So we get a very weird view of who we are. And in the borders, of course, they don't even get to see Scotland at all. Because yeah. they've got I was in the Broadcasting Commission and I was really amazed that that they, they don't get they don't get anything mm. about no wonder the electoral votes are still between Labour and the Tories there, because they don't get any mm. of the stuff that goes on in the Parliament. So I thought I want to go I want to go places that Scots used to go on holiday. And the backdrop will be I'll take my show. Very similar to what Connolly did 20 years ago. The difference is I want to speak to women. <laughs> Billy never talks to women. <laughs> or he didn't then. <laughs> and I wanted to go where women worked. Yeah. So I've ended up in, 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 that, in Rothsey and uh, 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 where they weave the uh, beaut fabrics and see where the women work. You know, fish factories, all of that. Mm. But also seeing the places, lots of places I haven't been since I was a kid. So I'll, I've done a brother. I was swimming in Stonehaven Pool. Oh, no, <laughs> well, I have to great. say, I have to say, I thought that was but it would be yeah. Baltic. I thought they yeah. were doing it for badness actually back then. <laughs> it's seventy three degrees. It's like a giant hot tub, and there you were under this guy. And the local community took it over. They run it. It's beautiful. And they run it from the end of May, I think, right through to October. Mm -hmm. And you swim in this hot pool. So I've seen bits of Scotland. I've been bell ringing with women in Stonehaven as well and, and Montrose. And seeing bits of Scotland that I hadn't seen, and it's great. It comes out in January. And in January, when you're sitting freezing, you go, yeah. I quite fancy a wee bus run to Arbroath. Or I quite fancy a wee trip to... We did Rothsey, Oban, North Berwick... And I have to say, the weather part of has it looks like, you know, San Moritz or somewhere like that. So hopefully it'll do the tourist trade. They'll be a bit disappointed when they come right enough. But anyway, <laughs> <laughs> it might be raining. But so that goes, so that was the sort of start of it. And then I, I do a two-hour show I'm in Aberdeen on Friday night in His Majesty's, and Dundee. I've been doing one-offs. But then did a run of eight here, but it was only an hour version of it here, so right. I just spoke very quickly. <laughs> you must, you must have huge reserves of uh, energy, particularly the moment. I mean, you've, it's not just your mm. your two shows; it's all the other stuff because you're yeah. speaking very actively, yeah. aren't you, in behalf of the the Yes campaign? You're doing a lot of travelling with that. Well, I'm on the board of Yes Scotland as well, but I, what I love is I'm invited not to do a Yes. I'm yeah. invited by local groups that have just got something together. Yeah. You know, Wester Hills. Um, Castle Mill. I, yeah. I want to go into those big areas where generally people don't. There's, uh, uh, all, uh, uh, all the top down stuff I'm not really that interested in. I'm interested in not the men in suits pontificating and telling yeah. people what it's going to be like. I'm interested Absolutely. in what National Collective are doing and all of that. And uh, so I've got one tonight for Colin Fox uh, in Edinburgh. But I also have that thing of, I, I don't care if I drop on the 19th. Well, I yeah. do a bit, but, you know, <laughs> I do drop with tiredness yeah. because I don't want to look back on this time and think I could have done more. Mm -hmm. So this is too important. Yeah. I became a granny 10 weeks ago, so... Oh, um, yeah. so I, I, I know, I'm still only 32. Um, so so I suddenly having a granddaughter, and it was yeah. one statistic that really got me when my daughter was pregnant in the Herald, and somebody said to me, you know, why are you voting yes? One male child in every four born in Glasgow this year won't live to their 65. It's a disgrace. It's and amazing. you're asking me why I'm voting yeah. yes. That's yeah. enough. That's the answer. It's yeah. it's so a, It's yeah. funny you saying that because through the course of my journey, mm. getting involved initially with Business for Scotland, but now increasingly more speaking at a lot of yes groups, I keep coming across things and I think 
and I've said to people, when did I sign up to this? Yeah. You know, and so the thing about child poverty, which yeah. is what really gets me, and I yeah. think for a start, mm -hmm. I'm irked that I didn't know the extent of it. I had a vague idea, of but course. not enough. Mm -hmm. And I'm irked to think, this is an absolute outrage. Yeah. And I feel like that, that for those of you of a certain age, you'll remember a cartoon called Roadrunner, oh, yeah. where they jump up and down the spot, you know, and... Um, I feel so angry that we've accepted so many of these things. Now, we're going to do something a wee bit different now. Audience. Oh, we're not dancing, are we? <laughs> are you asking? Uh, I'm dancing. Audience, have you got some questions you'd like to ask uh, Elaine? Now, don't oh, be all, shy. They're all terrified. I know. <laughs> ask away. Yes. Everyone's seen the, the STD big debate. Mm-hmm. From your perspective, how do we change that confrontational debate onto a more discussing the topic and getting into the detail of the topic rather than just to and from each other? And the audience sort of che almost cheering on a boxing ring, yeah. looking for a pop up mm -hmm. punch. People don't want that. People want to explore more about independence, mm -hmm. explore more about what a no vote means. I think you're right. No one's asking them to articulate what no really means, you know. There is a, Ken Curry, a great friend, who painter and, and a yes voter as well, and he his whole thing with his family was to say to them, you know, you might be voting no, but you think no means you're voting for the status quo. You're not. Everything, yeah. a, a, a no yeah. vote is as uncertain as a yes vote. But I, I agree with you, it's not articulated. I'm a big admirer of Alex Salmon, I have to say. As a woman, I'd like to say that out mm. there. I like him very, very much. I have never, ever found... <laughs> no, I don't fancy him. But, um, <laughs> and Moira's wife will be pleased yeah. to know that. Um, but uh, I've known him for over 20 years uh, as uh, through politics and all of that. I think he's an incredibly intelligent man. I don't think he's perfect at all, as none of us are. Um, uh, but I... I think the number that has been done on him by the press was why we ended up with that sort of a debate, actually. Um, I think uh, the Better Together campaign were very clever in briefing that Alistair Campbell isn't the, you know, he's not the guy that will beat Salmon and all that. It was like a boxing Darling, match. Yeah. Yeah. The briefings that went on and saying that the SNP were going, and some people didn't help by coming out going, it's going to be Bannock Burn all that. Oh, I can't be yeah. bothered with that. It's so macho. It's uh, but, but the media love it. I feel that the media in Scotland in particular um, at this point, which should be their shining hour. This should be the defining moment at BBC Scotland and STV, and they're aping what's going on in other debates that actually don't engage the public. They don't, that isn't what we really want. That confrontational style yeah. doesn't really work. Now, as a Yes campaigner, if you're going to have a boxing match, I wanted Alec to come out swinging, you know? <laughs> I wanted him to come out. Yeah. And, and I, But in actual fact, interesting part of the polling after that was that amongst women and amongst older voters the the swing to yes was bigger and actually what I, you realize is i said to somebody it will be no bad thing for alex salmon to look vulnerable and to look human because of the number that has been done on him and it probably is no bad thing for Alistair Darling to look human as well. And, and the debate did a wee bit of that. Mm -hmm. But I, I, I do not think it is an edifying uh, process for the audience, the way they pick the audience, the way they get them in, in this sort of mad way of, oh, it's got to be balanced, it's got to be this. So you get lots of angry people in a room, mm -hmm. half of whom want to shout at one side and half at the other. And I don't think it helps the undecideds at all. But... Um, for me, uh, the campaign is, as you were articulating earlier on, is out there mm. in the communities. There's a whole other debate going on out there. And that, for me, is the real change because that doesn't go back in the bottle. The genie's out. Yeah. Yeah. That level of engagement is just fantastic. Do you find that there has almost been a, an intentional push to try and make Alex Salmond the face of the entire campaign? Or make, make the independent move for, movement for independence about Alex Salmon rather than about the Yes, I don't having, think yeah. that's from Alex Salmon. I no, don't no, at all. I no, think no. I think he was briefed 
in a way, and I think they are aware that although his approval ratings are still huge for someone who's been in office seven years, mm -hmm. you know. And let's remember, Barack Obama didn't do yeah. too well and in the trust first ratings either. as well are considerably trust higher. Too. Mm -hmm. What has he actually done to harm Scotland? in his yeah. entire political career. You may not like him, but what is he actually You don't need to like him. You don't need to like him. He's a leader. But, but I do think that the the right-wing press particularly, and the, or the London-owned press, which is all of it practically, mm -hmm. have done a massive number mm -hmm. in years as to the shame of the Labour Party. I'm ashamed of the Labour Party at the moment. I, I, it's the only party I've ever been a member of. That mm -hmm. they... They have, their leader have, has actually come out and said, if you vote yes, we will wreck your economy. That is effectively what they're saying by not letting yeah. us use the pound. So I do think there's been a concerted campaign on the side of Better Together with their friends in the, in the media and press to do a number on Alex Hammond. So a demonization of him, which I, I think is totally unfair. But I also think he is part of that uh, that w the people say, oh, why are women not liking, liking him? They don't like any of them very much. Because yeah. women, we bear the brunt of the decisions that are made yeah. by men in suits across the country. And so therefore, I don't mind that women are sitting back and yeah. taking their time. And, and also that sort of style, yeah. as you point out, yeah. about that kind of very combative. I mean, part yeah. of the thing for me is about we're trying to change yeah. Scottish society. It's not just about yes vote, which is essential, as the enabler, of course. but the way we do our politics, yep. where you know somebody, you're right, you're wrong. No, actually, how can how can we grow as a society and move forward? Because we've got a huge job of work to do after oh, a yes vote. Mm -hmm. I was in, I did a, a yes meeting for um, radical independence in Barfield a few weeks ago, and and one of the women there said to me, you know, she was still I don't know, but I said, you know, there's the platform, there's three guys and me, and I said I want to change all this. I don't want us up here and you sitting down mm -hmm. there. I want us all in a circle and I want you to be able to stand up and say what you want and mm -hmm. challenge me and think, because this is yours. This yeah. is your debate. Mm -hmm. And this woman stood up and she said, uh, I'm still swithering about whether I'll vote yes or no. Or, or, or no. She says, I, I'm employed for the first time in 15 years. I've got a job, I'm so proud of myself. My self-esteem feels amazing. And she said, I, I, I feel proud in front of my children. I'm still getting government help because I'm only getting 30 hours work. But, and then she said, but I'm ashamed to say this in this room. There's one day a week, if I knew where a food bank was, I'd be going to it. And this is a woman in work, in one of the yeah. poorest constituencies of Western Europe. And you think, <laughs> and you're wondering, but she's frightened she'll lose that. That tiny little bit mm -hmm. that she's got, that fear has got through to her. You can understand why they're rich in many ways. They've got, a, they think they've got a lot to lose. I don't think they do, but but the uh, the richer in society are worrying more about mm -hmm. it. This is someone with practically nothing, mm -hmm. worrying that it'll get worse. And it's not articulated that with a no vote, her life will get worse. Oh, yeah. I mean, we all need to remember they've been absolutely, totally clear in terms of the continuation yeah. of uh, the austerity measures. And, of course, Boris's letter... I was just about to yeah, say... Yeah, making it really... You know, so if you were under any illusion... <laughs> I mean, because the people that would have you believe that there'll be further devolution fail to say that we are dependent upon mm. the votes and being allowed that from Westminster. And if there's no appetite, no. it's not going to happen. I doubt if a Tory UKIP coalition with Nigel Farage and Boris are going to go and... <laughs> I know Boris, <laughs> Scotland. <laughs> no. right, away you go. Yeah, right. that'd, be, that'd just be great. Yes. That'd be great. Right, OK, now, listen, thank you for that, Elaine. I'm going to ask pleasure. Sarah BT Smith to come back on and uh, just tell us what we're getting on our Twitter feed. <laughs> Don't read out the abuse. <laughs> <laughs> well, basically, Elaine, they love you. Uh, they're, they're, they're going wild ah, for the you. The family are on, that's good. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're, they're using a lot of different handles, so <laughs> good. It's very creative. Lot. I warned them. Um, our very own Lizzie Verick has been ah. tweeting about you. Um, Elaine C. Smith tells Ref TV, I wanted Alex Salmon to come out swinging in STV debate. Um, but better friends look vulnerable and human. That seems to be going down well. Um, and uh, Anne with an E, mm -hmm. that's her handle. Uh, Elaine C. Smith on now talking about the pure, the dead and the brilliant. This play should be on TV before 18.9. Um, so a, a call there for you to try and get it televised. Nice. Well, it's funny. Plan? Someone said that yesterday, you know, rather than uh, just in reference to your question, you know, rather than have another debate, the pure, the dead and the brilliant should have been on television. Mm -hmm. People, mm -hmm. lots of people have said yeah. that to me because actually 
is, and this was don't knows and no voters saying, this is actually more what we actually want yeah. to see. Yeah. Do you think that's something that could happen? No, because they'll do it really badly yeah. and cheaply and then it'll look really bad. Because <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> there's no money. And uh, I mean, something uh, that I adored a play I saw three times called Black Watch, which is an absolutely fabulous mm -hmm. piece. Yeah, excellent, when they did excellent. it for television, I just, I wanted, I wanted to cry because they, they didn't know how to really film a theatrical piece like that. And to do it properly, you have yeah. to spend a lot of money on it. And yeah. they've got a budget of like 20 quid or something. So <laughs> just, just like ourselves. Yes, yeah, yeah. 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 And that's just my fee. Yeah. <laughs> Well, Elaine, I'd like to say thank you very much for Pleasure. coming on. We are going to carry on and uh, chat a, a bit more amongst ourselves, have a look more at the papers. Now, the observant amongst you will have noticed that um, our other guests have been unavoidably detained, so we'll f carry on and do that. But, Elaine, I'd like to say thank you very much thank you. for coming on. I appreciate you've got to get away to your next I've show. I want to do my show now. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Elaine. Thank you. So we were just going to carry on chatting a bit more uh, briefly about the papers. You were mentioning something, Stephen, about uh, an article by uh, Leslie Riddich. What was the kind of hmm. uh, gist of that? Well, I mean, Leslie really kind of looked at this idea that uh, the currency union is almost a distraction. Yeah. From we thought we were going really to have a whole things. show without mentioning the currency yeah. union thing, weren't we? But I mean, that's that's really the point of the article is that the currency union, yes, it's one thing, but I, I think a lot of people are looking at it, and even. Uh, David Torrance, who's a strong no supporter, came out and said, let's be honest, we're going to have a currency union. Like, it's, uh, you know, being intellectually honest about it, I think there is a yeah. lot of support for this idea that it will happen if we want it. Um, and it is being used, I think, as a distraction from uh, how little representation we have at Westminster or the fact that we've had 400% rise in the use of food banks. And these are all these little stories and ideas yeah. that if we didn't have social media, uh, Twitter, uh, citizen journalism, no one would know about these things. They, they would just kind of disappear or, or, or there wouldn't be the same coverage mm -hmm. and, and spread. And that's what's so interesting about the, the social element to this debate is that there has been so much back and forth where we're so, um, if somebody in the yes side makes a claim, there's 10 people from the no camp going, well, that's wrong because of this. And you haven't looked at mm. this. And, and there's such a back and forth that it's fantastic because in the end, we all have to make a decision and it's a well, if it's a well-informed decision because we had that opportunity to engage with um, the debate online, that's that's fantastic. Yeah. Even as um, actually one of our Twitter followers just a few minutes ago said, Slange uh, Math, um, UK Together, if they spend less time asking Alex Salmond about the Plan B and more time explaining better together Plan A on Indiref, I think there's a, a real mm. keenness that a lot of people feel very tired of how the debate has gone and yeah. this kind of persistent lack of... Um, discussion about anything that really matters in life, about how people are going to live their lives, mm. what more democracy, what more participation, what real empowerment could mean for people yeah. beyond what money you're going to have in your pocket. But I suspect part of the issue for the No campaign is it's uh, they are singularly unable to articulate what a no vote is for. We're very clear what it's against because we've had a lot of that, but what's it actually for in terms of change or ambition or fairness or democracy or mm. you know any of the sort of themes that we've uh, we've t we cover off routinely i mean i don't feel free to tweet somebody if you know what it's <laughs> actually for i'm not clear one of the things that i picked up on that interested me was the the story uh, about david Heyman meeting his new neighbors uh, jenny yule and uh, alan cochran and a letter appearing uh, stating how utterly scandalised they were living next door to a nationalist. I don't know if you had any thoughts on that. Mm, yeah, it's definitely been seemingly a tactic to try and say that all yes voters are nationalists and, and yeah. to almost uh, make the whole yes movement a very small thing and, and, and say it's just petty-minded nationalism when it, it's much larger than that, but it's easier to knock down a straw man than the actual... Um, debate. It was uh, Colin Fox of the SSP who said voting yes doesn't make you a nationalist, it makes you a democrat because that's what the mm -hmm. vote is for. It's about trying to bring power back to Scotland so the people of Scotland can vote on what's important and affects them. Yeah. Yeah. Just to come back to that idea about what a no vote is for and maybe that kind of lack of articulation of the vision there, um, I think there was, there was an interesting piece on yesterday's, um, on yesterday's um, Radio Scotland where Ken McLeod, who's an ardent no voter and, and quite often is the kind of one cultural voice that comes out, um, saying that a no vote could be transformational. 
So this is sort of the, the devil's advocate side of things. Yeah. But, um, but it was an interesting perspective to say that actually a, a no vote is maybe a, a kind of vote for co in confidence in the UK and a, and a vote mm. to try and do things together. Mm. I just thought it was an interesting perspective. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Have we got any questions, any more questions from the, uh, the audience? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I'm, I'm still undecided. One of my uh, problems that I've had with this, the no campaign seem to spend their time telling us all the things that Scotland will lose. I'm just wondering what would they lose? Yeah. Vote, no. There must be something, they must They must see it as being a benefit to keep us, if us is the right answer, I'm not sure if that's the right yeah. to, to say it, but there must be benefits to them. They must be want us, wanting us to stay for some reason. Mm. Yeah. So, so there you see, you're saying that there, there must, be, they must be a fear of loss if Scotland votes yes, and what is it they're scared of losing? Mm. So, do we believe that that's the 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 social unions which have made great, and of course the social unions won't change. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, I've still have had a mother uh, who was uh, English, and I'll still have an aunt in Wales. That won't change at all. No. Or is it actually about the financials? Uh, because there will be a, a financial implication uh, mm. in terms of, uh, the, you know, Scotland votes yes. What's your yeah. Well, I mean, Scotland has definitely been a net contributor to the yeah. UK for the last 33 years. Yeah. So we, we have been paying money in um, to, I guess, the bank at Westminster, if you like. And obviously, I think it's fair that we have been getting on back a little bit less. Um, I think yeah, it's, it's a Boris, statement of facts. Yeah, yeah, I mean, Boris Johnson himself said that uh, a pound spent in Croydon is worth more than a pound spent in Strathclyde. And I think that's been an unfortunate attitude of his, is that um, funneling money into London is more important than the rest of the UK. Mm -hmm. uh, just, we see the same thing with the high-speed rail line. It's going to connect Leeds and Manchester to London, and Scotland's paying 10% of the bill. Um, but we're not getting any benefit from it. Yeah. Actually, it's not it costs us money. Right. Uh, you know, in terms of the yeah. business case for, for Aberdeen, they worked out it was actually costs uh, mm. areas of, of Scotland money, which... I mean, it did come out near the time. Yeah, mm -hmm. so I mean, I think it's clear there is a, a, a financial consideration because Scotland has indeed been a, a net contributor and that's just a statement of, of fact. And it's also correct to say that uh, Scotland has received more money, but there's still a difference in those two in terms of the kind of income and, and expenditure. Mm -hmm. so but in terms of almost the politics of it as well, um, I understand that a lot of people probably think that if they're maybe not completely maybe not Scotland, but further south anyway, if they don't understand the reasons for why this debate is happening in the first place, there is almost like the whole let's stay together thing of um, we're friends. Like, why would we want to have this split? And I get that, but we'll still be friends afterwards. Of course. And um, yeah, it was even like Billy Bragg who came out and said if, if Scotland votes yes, it will set England free. Because w when we, if we take mm. that step, suddenly the question of an assembly in the north of England can be raised because we've done it. You know, I, I start to bring more democracy back to the rest of the UK and move everything away from uh, London and actually make it fairer everywhere, not just like Scotland leaving and then, you know, never mind everyone else. It's almost like to become this beacon of what we can do differently gives more people the opportunity to step up and say, well, if they've done it, we can do it and, and, and yeah. almost see the power spread back out across the whole of the UK. I think yeah. it's really interesting thinking about why the people on the no side want us to stay, as they might put it. And there's a kind of interesting thought experiment about what would we say in Scotland if um, the people of Shetland suddenly turned around to us and said, do you know what, we want independence. And there was a big independence movement in Shetland. And some people uh, in, in the island communities of Scotland um, are very pro-independence for the islands and pro-devolution. And I think, actually, in my heart of hearts, I kind of think, I don't want Shetland to leave. I love Shetland. I'm proud of being part of the same country. Yeah. And I think, actually, that feeling of pride and yeah. connection is, is probably one of the natural feelings that some yeah. no voters or mm -hmm. some of our friends and family in England and Wales and the rest of the yeah. Union have about Scotland leaving. But actually, when you spend some time looking at the sort of democratic arguments, the participation arguments about what that independent um, government for, for a region or, or a nation or an island community would mean, actually that's when you get into the debate where you go, do you know what, fair enough, people of Shetland, if you want to yeah. go independent, that's okay because it's going to mean all of these things for you. And what people in yeah. England in particular aren't getting just now, certainly through their mainstream media, is 
what it means for the people of Scotland. It's that array of mm. other yeah. things that well, independence so still, can mean. I mean, I, I was there fairly recently, so mm. they've still got this kind of thing that, d do you not love us anymore? And of course, that's what's love got to do with it? Mm. I kind of uh, felt like saying, cue for a song, but I'll not go there. <laughs> uh, but, right. uh, but it's it's a measure of how relatively kind of young, if you like, the debate is. We've all been eating, sleeping, breathing this to people, that those of us who have been involved, and the themes and, you know, how we, we kind of move and grow together, all the different groups. And they've just not had the chance to do that because it's been very limited, and, and it's just now that they're starting to look at it. So any more questions from the uh, the audience? Yes, sir. Have you got any thoughts about the future of broadcasting in Scotland after independence? Have we got any thoughts about the future of broadcasting after independence? Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. Hard Time on Twitter says, uh, referendum TV, the discussions you're facilitating are in-depth, expansive in education as well. So much better than BBC and STV. So um, maybe there's your <laughs> <laughs> Let's hear it for referendum TV. Yeah, and funnily enough... Uh, um, Libby MacArthur was on yesterday who directed 3000 uh, Trees and I'd, she also spoke yesterday and the other day at something else was at about the difficulties in getting kind of creative output uh, commissioned in Scotland and she was making the point that the example uh, earlier in the week that if somebody has a grand idea about something in Linwood and trots off you know to say I, I've got this really uh, uh, great idea for a, a themed show it, they cannot get it commissioned here in Scotland. It needs to go to London, of course, at which point somebody says, where's Linwood and why would we be interested? And that's fundamentally just articulates the barrier. And, of course, I know from a business perspective the, the funding considerations, the, the, there's also the sense, well, why would we bother to fund that there? So I fear that from a kind of creative perspective, we're, we're losing an arm if we can't let our voice, our own voice be heard. Mm. Uh, we, and it's almost that goes back to what Alan Bissett's show was sort of saying when, when they, they looked forward they kind of got a fairy to appear and say what would happen in a no vote the outcome was that Scotland would disappear because its voice no longer could be heard there was no outlet for it and I, I, mm. I regard culture expression of self as, as fundamental mm. uh, so great question Paul what do you yeah. think guys? Well, I mean even looking at it from the perspective of news uh, broadcasting there's been claims from the Yes camp that the media has been biased towards um, the pro-union side of it, but um, I was at an event with the editor of the Sunday Herald who said that he didn't feel it was bias so much as that when the BBC is looking at Scotland, the politicians there aren't necessarily as important as further south, which is why it seems like if mm -hmm. David Cameron farts, it's a headline. <laughs> uh, but when David Cameron, uh, when uh, sorry, Alex Salmond comes forward with an idea, it doesn't necessarily get the same amount of coverage. It's not bias, it's just almost a way of viewing Scotland as being a wee bit secondary. And I, I don't necessarily know if I 100% agree if that's why um, the, the media is portraying the referendum in certain ways that it is, but I definitely think if we had a broadcaster based in Scotland, in an independent Scotland, it would of course be more focused on Scottish issues. <laughs> I think yeah. it would actually be a bit more internationalist as well. Mm. I, th I think you mm -hmm. could get um, broader perspectives than what we've got at the moment because we are so London-centric. Ah, oh, right. Sorry, we've got another question. Yeah, I heard the editor of the Sunday Herald probably the same event he tweeted, mm. and I totally disagreed mm. because what worries me is the end was five weeks away and we've talked today about how the, the grassroots movement, and it's true, I've seen it, I've witnessed it, I've been at meetings, it's fantastic. There's the social media thing, and part mm -hmm. of that, people go on the debates and the arguments go back and forward, and the links to this information and that information. But there's a whole group of people out there who are, they either don't have access to the internet, don't know how to find that kind of information. They maybe don't go along to the meetings at night because they don't know they're on or they're not all that well publicised. And they're getting their information from mainstream media, which is the record, the, the mail the Mirror, the um, Express, all of these papers, what are they telling the people of Scotland? Too wee, too poor, can't do it, and all the rest of it. So I really yeah. do worry about the effects, and mm. I did not agree with the, the editor of the Sunday Herald. I think there's been a concerted effort to keep the people of Scotland in the dark about what the <coughs> people can achieve. Yeah. Mm. And that's definitely why I think we see the rise of a lot of citizen journalism and websites online yeah. um, that are challenging that and are trying to get news out there. Um, but exactly, it is a problem when we do have communities that don't necessarily have internet access because they don't get that, yeah. which is why it's so important that the movements do have people on the ground who are going door yeah. to door. 
And it's a case of engaging face to face when you can't reach them any other way. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I agree with you. It's, uh, I think all the way through this campaign for all of us, it's been uh, expressed as a massive concern. How do you reach the people that only take their information in, uh, in that way? And I think at the moment where we are in a campaign, people's getting out there, engaging within their community is beyond vital. It's mm. absolutely essential because that's the only way now, if they don't use social media, we're going to reach them. I think have we got another question at the back there. Yes, sir. I just wonder if you have any thoughts about the SNP's proposed reduction in uh, corporation tax. Um, one thing that slightly worries me about the, the prospects of, of independence is the lengths that the SNP um, seem to be willing to go to uh, attract inward investment. I don't know whether you've seen the film Eugene Trump, but um, that certainly yeah. um, worries me. Yeah. I suspect Michelle and I will be on slightly different en ends of the spectrum on this one, but um, on the question of corporation tax, from a green perspective, yeah. for sure, um, we certainly don't want to be seeing a cut in corporation tax. Um, but actually, when you when you speak to people in the business community, and, and uh, obviously I've not tried to put words in your mouth, but folks that I've spoken to say that actually corporation tax matters less than business rates um, for most businesses, yeah. and the vast majority of businesses are, are we um, and, and yeah. are affected more by business rates than corporation tax. And I think actually when you look at the inward investment that the Scottish Government has already pursued, like Amazon, for example, and giving huge tax breaks and encouraging them in with money, and then Amazon undercut so many other businesses, pay their staff very little on really poor terms and conditions, I think that's a very questionable tactic, and I certainly don't want that to be the kind of picture of an independent yeah. Scotland that we're, we're yeah. going towards. I mean, it, it's my take, both from a business perspective um, I don't think they're necessarily saying that. I mean, I think the white paper, the message from that was uh, that they would continue to be supportive of businesses that add a lot of value to the, the Scottish economy. And they'll, they'll kind of focus on corporation tax. The big picture for me, actually, is that it's vital that they have control over all the kind of tax levers, if you like, and of which corporation tax is only one. And so uh, I... I mean, I can see how it would work, but uh, there's always unintended outcomes with any kind of tax treatment. And in reality, I, I have confidence that they would look and say, well, what's, what's the impact on that and what is it that they're trying to promote? But also the other thing is that it's only starting to get into the kind of debate just now is about small businesses. Uh, we've often been saying it in Business for Scotland that when, when people have used the term business says, what they actually mean is large multinational conglomerates headquartered in London and listed on the, the Stock Exchange in London. But we know in Scotland that 99% of our businesses are in the SME community. And But having control of all these kind of fiscal levers, these tax levers, they can promote growth of these small businesses. And the important thing for me is the link between business and society. Uh, business is an enabler for society rather than an end in itself to me and supporting these small uh, businesses to grow to grow within the community different types of businesses like they have in Germany they have their middle stands which are the kind of medium size so I suspect actually our thinking's closer mm -hmm. than you might think it's often it's been this kind of prism of how the world's been viewed and what we've been receiving as well mm -hmm. so yeah. okay right so I think we're going to wind up for today now the observant amongst you would definitely have noticed that we did not have our other uh, guests so uh, this is the nature of what we have to do in referendum tv it's called busking it or good enough for jazz when I went to the Royal Scottish Academy of Music and Drama However, tomorrow we do have guest Dr. Tiffany no, Jenkins. No, tomorrow, tomorrow. Wednesday. Wednesday. <laughs> Thank you for that. My apologies, everybody. Yes, Wednesday, Dr. Tiffany Jenkins, a cultural sociologist, writer and commentator. Andy Summers, photographer and architect. And Ross Aitchison, both of National Collective. And Brian Fummy, who's a comedian. I did say Fummy. And uh, thanks today, uh, we've certainly been winging it very much in the theme of Referendum TV to Lucy Davidson as today's producer. <laughs> Michael Miller and Lewis Hamilton on camera. <laughs> Jamie Shim Shimkoviak as production assistant. <laughs> David Henry, our assistant director. And Linda Graham our director, and Alison Bulhari, our editor. And a final word of thanks.
uh, for the generous sponsorship of uh, Sandy Adam of Springfield Properties, who's been a great support in the wider Yes campaign. And of course, from myself, Michelle Thompson, Stephen Payton, Sarah Beattie-Smith, our guests for today, and all of you for watching. Thank you and goodbye. <laughs>